Hello viewers, you're watching the Youth Dialogue and I am your host Jenna Basonko. It's always good to be back. So we're back here in CRR. Um, like I said in my previous episode, we have a very, very strong partnership with Action Aid Gambia supporting Youth Dialogue and we're also helping them in relation to uh, the projects that they have going on in rural Gambia. I feel like it is really important to recognize their efforts and with this partnership with Action Aid the Gambia, we're able to do that and we are able to show young people and they are able to showcase their projects as well which is quite important like I always say partnership is the key to so many things so today we're in the CRR youth convergence the regional youth convergence and we're about to see what some of these young people are doing so they're working on different thematic areas climate change um, civic education sexual and reproductive health so tomorrow um, inshallah we will have um, a specific panel discussion with them in relation to all of these topics and um, generally elections is coming up what is their feeling how are they feeling about electing their own leaders so that's the theme for this particular convergence so we're about to go inside and talk to maybe a few of them because we're here for just um, two days we've missed um, the greater part of the event but it's still okay because we're able to catch up at the latter part and this is the most important part because um, tomorrow they'll be finalizing some of the um, solutions that they have because currently they're working on this particular um, thematic areas that I mentioned previously. So let's go inside and take a look at how beneficial this particular convergence has been and why they're working on um, this um, thematic areas that I mentioned which is civic education, sexual and reproductive health as well as climate change. Let's go talk to them. Yeah, so viewers, like I mentioned in the introduction, um, this particular program is very important because all of these groups are separated into three different thematic areas, ranging from climate change to civic education. We know um, the elections is coming up, it's coming up, and young people have a great, great role to play. And we also have climate change, sexual and reproductive health, which is all vital. So can you guys remind me, which group is this? Okay, so this is one of the most important um, topic at the moment, like I said. So for me, this is one of the most important groups. But elections doesn't also mean that we should put aside sexual and reproductive health because these are everyday problems that we get to deal with as women. So we will get to uh, talk to that particular group as well. But for now, this is the civic education group. So, I mean, I'm told that you guys have put together solutions, way forward and a lot of things. So, but before we get into that, can you just talk to me about how this convergence has been going so far? You know, I can see a lot of energy and considering the fact that the participants are drawn from Central River region. These are not people coming from Banjul. I mean, this is something that I always say. Before now, I didn't have the opportunity to reach out to you, but now that I'm able to do it, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of potential in all of you. Youth in Banjul and youth in Sierra are all equal and are equally smart and can come up with brilliant initiatives like any other youth found anywhere. So the, really, the location doesn't matter. But considering the fact that all of you guys are drawn from different areas in CRR is quite amazing. So talk to me about how the convergence has been so far, briefly. Um, thank you very much. Uh, once again, uh, uh, my name is Musa Jawara from Sarwi Devlet, Lower Flood West District, Central River Region. I'm a participant. Well, the uh, convergence started on Sunday, mm -hmm. that was on the 4th of this month, mm -hmm. April. Um, uh, to on the 8th, that's going to be tomorrow. So far, so good. The program has been going fine since we start on Sunday. Um, we converge on Sunday, Monday we start business. Mm -hmm. So today is the third day of the program. Mm -hmm. um, to make it short, the program has been going smoothly okay. since we start. Yeah. Okay, so when you say it has been going smoothly, talk to me about why it is going smoothly. How, how good is the program so far? What impact has it registered so far? That is what I want to uh, understand. Thank you very much. As youth of this region, mm -hmm. We um, learn a lot in this program. Okay. As you rightly mentioned earlier before, mm. um, the convergence has been divided into three to four classes. Mm -hmm. And this class is given a specific area mm -hmm. of concentration. And here, as you said, this is civic education and democracy. Mm -hmm. And we have climate change, um, reproductive health, oh, yeah. and leadership. Mm -hmm. 
So um, uh, as civic education, mm -hmm. we learn love and civic education. We now constant and uh, um, say something about our rights or responsibilities mm -hmm. as youths of this nation. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the things that we makes the gathering very important. Okay, can you just give me a clue a little bit of what you guys have put together? I know the presentation is tomorrow, and tomorrow, inshallah, we will have a specific panel discussion where we will delve into it more. But just give me a little bit. When you guys discuss as a group, when it comes to civic education, what are some of the things that the participants have been bringing out? What are some of the things that the participants have been concerned about when it comes to civic education in the Gambia, particularly in this region? Thank you very much. Um, but I would like to talk on one topic that is democracy. Okay. That is discussed on. Mm. on the democracy, we talk about uh, the problems of democracy presently. Okay. We talk about the causes of democracy, the effect and solution to the causes of democracy. Mm. First, we talk about illegal migration. Okay. We talk about illiteracy. We talk about um, what we call tribal, political tribalism. Mm -hmm. We talk about so many things on the co problems okay. of democracy. Then we also talk about causes of those problems. Okay. Then we talk about effect of those problems, the effect the causes have or the problems have on okay. us as youths of this region. Okay. Then we talk about solution to those problems. Okay. Yeah. So how is the how is irregular migration in this area? Because you talked about it. How is irregular migration in in in, in CRR? Anyway, irregular migration have been going on CRR almost three to four years, but okay, it is high. The rate is high, mm. definitely. It's very high. Very high. Okay, I guess this is a topic that we can delve into further during the panel discussion tomorrow. But really, what do you think is the relationship between democracy and irregular migration? Because you talked about the fact that there's a relationship. So when you while you guys were discussing. What do you think is the relationship? Yes, we come to learn that through democracy, you have people who abuse people's rights okay. without knowing the, the content of democracy. Okay. So because of that, sometimes it leads to tribal problems, okay. tribal conflict. Okay. So because of some of these tribal conflicts, people get to flee out of... People try to move from one place, place to another. another. Okay. But I mean, democracy is a good thing, really, if you take a look at it. Because, but, and like I say all the time, I don't think Gambia is ever going to go back to where we used to be during Jammes time because everybody is so aware. So um, I, I'm happy about the fact that you guys are trying to like break down what democracy means, whereby it's not like abusing peop other people's rights and all of that. You know, like they say, when we used to go to school, if your right starts here, know that another person right starts there as well and it kinds of a collective responsibility that everybody has to take so it's some is there something else that you would want to tell me about your group before we leave and move to the next group yeah because um if you see i give you this point democracy is like it comes to the gambia 2016 mm -hmm. after the presidential election yeah so many people have the misconcept of democracy okay. they are in, uh, sensitized about democracy okay this is why we have such problems during the time mm -hmm. but anyway our group mm -hmm. we have learned a lot mm -hmm. and we understand briefly the importance and the essence of democracy okay. so as we are right now we are all okay with democracy and civic rights okay. as youth of this re uh, region. Okay, great. Um, well, I think it's very, like I said, because if you look at the Peace Ambassador situ monthly situational report, it talks about that, you know, the rhetorics of um, accusations and counter accusations between political parties is a huge problem. Yeah. And that is not really what democracy calls for, whereby people would insult each other anyhow or hate speech and all of that. So I think it's really good that you know, it, you guys did not really confine um, civic education to just probably elections, but democracy and the list goes on as well. I know I said I was going to stop here, but one last question. What do they think about the upcoming elections as a civic education group, finally? What, what, what is the mindset of this particular group when it comes to the upcoming 2021 elections? Thank Quickly. You. Thank you very much. I think I will appreciate that question very well. Okay. As I speak to you, my group, mm -hmm. We are all here ready to go and sensitize our fellow youths in the region about Amazing. the upcoming okay. election. Mm. Because we've learned something very important here mm -hmm. concerning democracy, mm -hmm. human rights, and all those things. Yeah. So um, as I'm speaking to you, we are ready and then we're going to disseminate information mm -hmm. immediately we move from this camp okay. to our fellow youths. Oh, so amazing. that we can understand 
the concept of democracy. And as upcoming election is coming, mm -hmm. everybody will be out in their large numbers as youths mm -hmm. of this region mm -hmm. to vote. Amazing. Yeah. That, is, that is the importance of having trainings as such. It doesn't stop with you people, from you guys. You guys are the leaders or the ambassadors kind of thing, whereby you go back to your communities and sensitize people. Because if it stops here, then it's a total waste of money. Indeed. And normally that's what happens in Gambia. People just gather and at the end of the day, it just stops there. So it's a good thing that part of your plans, you are ready to make sure that um, the information reaches you know, your respective areas in this particular region. Thank you so much for your time and hope to uh, have someone else from your uh, team tomorrow to further delve into elections and all the other issues that you guys get to discuss on the civic education. So let's go and um, see another group, um, preferably uh, sexual and reproductive health. Like I say, elections is a catalyst for conflict. We like it or not. And I'm not saying the 2021 elections is going to uh, uh, be unpeaceful or whatever, but elections generally is a catalyst for conflict. And women sometimes get to suffer here and there when it comes to access to different, different things. So I think it's really important that in as much as the civic education is been done, sexual and reproductive health as well is put uh, forward because at some point, I mean, it's important because it has to do with women issues. And when these issues happen, women tend to be the most vulnerable. So I think the connection is there. So let's move on to another group. Uh, preferably sexual and reproductive health, and we'll take it from there. Believe it, believe it. How are you guys? Are you guys hungry? Uh, you? <laughs> we'll see All right. So nice to meet you guys. So we're just from uh, that group. So their topic is um, civic education. So I'm aware that you guys are focusing on sexual and reproductive health. Yeah. So uh, what I, 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 when I was there, I talked about the fact that currently the most you know, important thing to some people, and it's important to me too, civic education. But sexual and reproductive health is an everyday issue, something that needs to be talked about every single day. And because of elections, the conversation of sexual and reproductive health shouldn't stop, despite the fact that that is a pressing issue that everybody needs to discuss about. So I'm so happy that this is part of the topics. So yeah, what is your name? Yeah, my name is Mamadou S. Jalo. Okay. I am from Sierra, a village called Kudang. Kudang. Okay, yes. so we are in Kudang. So you yes. are hosting us. So Anna Benachinbi, where Anna Anna Bagasi, because Yan you the host. Yes, although I so host you, like, but it was a late information to host that. <laughs> so he's so trying to justify problem. he's trying to justify himself. <laughs> yes. He's trying to say that he cannot provi provide food for us later. Yes. Anyway, we forgive you. Okay, so next time when we're coming, yes. we'll inform you prior. Okay? Good. So um now let's get into the conversation proper. It's important to have a little bit of fun sometimes. Mm -hmm. So uh, talk to me about what you guys have been discussing uh, so far and how impactful has the youth convergence, the regional Sierra youth convergence been so far? Yeah, well, like as to my understanding is, like this youth convergence, it gives me a lot of experience in my life mm -hmm. because this is my first time to attain youth convergence mm -hmm. and then it is well explain and I have so many knowledge about youth conversion mm -hmm. and then as we are members of the youth conversion mm -hmm. we are happy with the camp mm -hmm. and we are happy with our membership. Okay so yes. you are happy this is the first time yes. that you're able to be in such a group yes. so it, which means you're getting to learn a lot. So your topic is sexual and reproductive health. Yes. So what have you guys been discussing about sexual and reproductive health within this period? Yes. Okay well on the uh, sexual reproductive health we discuss many topics, one like maternal, maternal health, mm -hmm. early marriage, mm -hmm. unwanted pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Yes, we discuss a uh, lot, 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 uncountable okay. ones, yeah. So what, 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 did you, what do you guys think about early marriage? Because I know early marriage has been banned since 2016. Yes. So what did you guys discuss in relation to that? And what solutions did you guys come up with, you know, to change the narrative? Yes, okay. So the solutions to the narrative on the early marriage, mm -hmm is if we are uh, finished with the campus to go back to our members, okay. village members, okay. we call them as a community meeting. Mm -hmm. We sensitize about 
early marriage. Okay, that's what you planned. Yes. So what do you think about the fact that it has been banned since 2016, but it's still happening? What do you think about that? What do you guys think about that? You're speaking on their behalf. Well, we think about that. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's lack of understanding mm -hmm. and lack of more sensitization under the early marriage. Mm -hmm. These are things which is lacking. So you think people don't know? Yes. People, to my people don't know or people don't agree. Because, you know, it's a two-way thing. Some people say, okay, people do not know that this is harmful. Some are like, um, it's ignorance. Because if you look at social media, I know, okay, some of our family members, especially in this area, they don't have access to social media. So do you, are you telling me that there's not enough sensitization that's been done by bigger organizations in relation to this area? Yes, uh, in our area here, CRR, mm. I can say the sensitization is lacking more. Really? Yes. Okay. So if groups are watching, groups that are fighting against child marriage, they are saying that the sensitization is lacking in this area. But So which means you are ready to complement the efforts of those organizations by going back to your communities and do what? And do sensitizations mm -hmm. to explain and to teach them more mm -hmm. about it. About it. About the early marriage. Well, yes. I am so happy that this is impactful because the for a group that I just left, they also talked about the fact that they will be doing some community sensitization. So is, something, uh, is there something else that you might want to share with us from your group? Is there something else you want to share? Yes. Mm -hmm. There's so many things we want to share, like you are guys of visitors, mm -hmm. and you are here. Mm -hmm. And to my own preamble mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. if we are happen to be sensitizing this about this early marriage, mm -hmm. what will be the effort of you, a group visiting, mm -hmm. to help, okay. and we join together okay. to make it as a regulation for this nation. Okay, so you're saying that there should be collaboration between the media and, and some uh, of you so guys. Yes. Interesting. So did you, what did you guys discuss about female genital mutilation? Or you didn't touch that? No, we don't touch that. You, do, you did not touch no, FJM? No. Why is that? Yes, because we were, the time was not enough. enough. Time enough. But yeah. I mean, you guys do know about how harmful it is, right? Yes. And yes. we all agree that it's not a good practice. But anyway, child marriage is as well not a good practice, and you guys talked about it. Maternal mortality, you said. Yes. So what, what was the discussion based on, on, on maternal mortality? Maternal mortality, like example, like uh, the, uh, the unwanted pregnancy, mm. like one, like in our families or in our communities, yeah. unwanted pregnancies oh, are un many. Unwanted pregnancy instead, instead of maternal mortality? Yes. It's or the how unwanted pregnancies lead to maternal mortality? It, li it lead to maternal mortality if you are early married. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And if you are early married, mm -hmm. the maternal mortality can be occur under that early marriage because of you are a young one. Mm -hmm. Two, you will feel ashamed to explain to your colleagues or to your family that you are pregnant. Mm -hmm. Understand? Mm -hmm. And to have help will be a problem if you don't explain your problem. Okay, so which means if sensitization is done, this issue can be history. Yes. Plus, when people agree, agree well. on it. Amazing. Yeah. All right. So this is um, what they discussed. Mm. Um, so I hope that tomorrow we'll delve into some of these things more. So, uh, like I said in the beginning, we have sexual and reproductive health. We have civic education. We also have climate change. Climate change is as well a pressing issue. It is something that we have to discuss. The COP26 is coming in November. You know, very important that as a country we're having conversations as such. So let's move on to the next group. Thank you so much uh, for uh, giving me a rundown of some of the things that you guys have been discussing within this period. All right, so let's go to the next group. Okay, so now we're heading to the final group, climate change, am I right? Okay, how are you guys? Great. So this is the final group of uh, I'm told there's a leadership group, but I guess they're not here. So I would say you guys are the final group discussing climate change. And I think um, it is very timely to discuss climate change because the COP26 is coming in November, November, December in the UK. So I think it's really important that we're having this conversation. So gentlemen, thank you for willing to talk on behalf of your team. What is your name? Um, you're welcome. My name is Alpha Yahya Bangura. Okay, Alpha. Yeah. So, Alpha, what have you guys been discussing about climate change uh, uh, for the past days? What has been the discussion? Um, well, 
for the past few days we've been discussing on um, what climate change is all about, um, some of the causes of climate change and the effects together with the possible solutions. So those are what we have been discussing these past few days. What, what did you guys come up with as possible solutions? Um, when we discussed on climate change and found out some of the problems and their effect, yeah. the conclusion that we came to, uh, we have to do afforestation, that is planting of new trees, especially when they have been cut down. And the other one is we have to enforce our laws because we believe there are laws that have been put in place um, to stop that is um, deforestation and so on, and they are not being enforced. The third thing is um, in the aspect of um, waste product or mm. dumping of waste product mm -hmm. wastages, there should be proper recycling of waste. So um, we also have, um, when we discuss all, again, we, ma we made mention of a problem that is migration, mm -hmm. especially for farmers and others. When they notice that um, their yields are low, mm -hmm. they find other places in order to get what they want, that is their employment and source of income. Okay. So we, the um, possible solution that we put in place in that is we should um, grow crops that, adopt, uh, that can adopt to the climate condition of that particular place. Okay. So those are the few things we've discussed. I things. think the issue of deforestation that you just talked about is very important because if you guys have been following the news on QTV, you would realize that um, an endangered species called rosewood you know, it's been um, illegally, there's an illegal logging of um, rosewood. And this is part of your topic, and it's happening in the Gambia just recently, and it's causing community disputes. So I think talking about deforestation is a, is a, is a very important aspect. So why do you think really some of these laws are not implemented? As a, as a young person, being in the layback seat and watching all the activities happen, why do you think most of these laws are not really implemented? Is it due to corruption? Is it due to uh, not the right people not being in place? Or what, what is the reason? Yeah, I think one of the major reasons could be corruption. And the second one, as he mentioned, that um, the right people are not put in place. And apart from that also, um, it's like some people, they do not want to report. Like they see people cutting down trees, believe and they know very well that that is harmful to the climate or the uh, climatic situation of a particular place. So if you see those, I believe um, you should try to report. So those are the things that are making the uh, deforestation very persistent in the country. And something else that I've observed in CRR is bushfires. Bushfires, because I didn't know that. But on my way coming, uh, two weeks back, I witnessed it. I saw bush, a wild bushfire happening, you know, and it, it's really disturbing the environment. So I don't know, as young people um, uh, talking about climate change, is this an area that you guys talked about, bushfires? Yes. Did you guys discuss it? Yes. So what did you guys discuss on bushfire? Um, uh, what we discussed on bushfire um, basically is the act of setting the bush on fire. Mm -hmm. and. We believe that um, people who are setting the bush on fire, uh, they lack the sensitization or they lack the knowledge that um, the bushfire could put the environment to a very great danger. So one, uh, what we plan to do about that is to engage certain or those particular people on sensitizations to try to let them know what harm they are causing to the society if bush burning is being carried out by them. Amazing. So what else do you want to share on behalf of your group? What else do you want to share with us on behalf um, of the team? On behalf of the team, mm -hmm. being that our theme is on climate change, um, I'm giving message to every, each and every Gambian. We have a role to play to protect our environment. Um, the cutting down of trees, bush burning, uh, we should try to stop it. Recycling of waste, we should try to recycle our waste uh, as proper, properly as possible or as um, best in the best possible manner mm -hmm. to make sure that um, our climate gets back to a normal condition or if it's not going to come back, let it remain at, at is, as it is to make sure we could uh, live in a better place and we could enjoy our climatic conditions. I think that's all I have. Thank you very much. Guys, can you clap for this young man? I think he is amazing. He is amazing. You did amazingly well talking on behalf of your group. Thank you so much. So um, I think that is the end of um, the group sessions that we have. So we, we I there on climate change. I talk, I spoke to the ones on 
sexual and reproductive health, civic education as well. So this is day one of our coming here myself and my team obviously so tomorrow we are going to have a panel discussion where we would delve more into some of the challenges that uh, youth in CRR are facing so viewers that is the end of the group sessions that we're going to have for this particular episode like I mentioned tomorrow we are going to have a, a panel discussion whereby we will have all of them and we'll have few people to talk to in relation to the challenges that youth in um, CRR obviously and um, all the other areas still on civic education as well on sexual and reproductive health and on climate change so we're just going to have a wider an in-depth discussion tomorrow inshallah so uh, till I come your way tomorrow this is day one obviously we are so tired we just arrived today and we were able to achieve this thumbs up to my team everybody so tomorrow inshallah we will get to complete the discussion so bye for now till tomorrow Hello viewers, you are still watching the Youth Dialogue on QTV and like I mentioned yesterday, we're right here in CRR attending the Youth Convergence um, across uh, different areas in CRR and I'm so excited to be here. Like I mentioned, um, it is important to also feature some of the activities that young people are doing in rural Gambia. Youth Dialogue is a safe space for young people in the country and we believe that young people in Combo, young people in Banjul, young people in any part of the country are our own young people. There's no difference to say that, okay, you're from rural Gambia or you are from Banjul. We're all the same and they are smart because if you look at um, what we were able to have from yesterday, you would realize that they have very good ideas, but most of the time they lack opportunities for implementation and all that. So yesterday I did mention that we'll be having a panel discussion today in relation to some of the topics that we discussed yesterday. Part of that is climate change, sexual violence, and civic education. So I just feel like right now we should focus more on the civic education aspect, considering the fact that um, the 2021 elections is fast approaching. And it is important to also take a look at the stance of young people when it comes to such activities. That is why I'm joined here by two brilliant young people, a lady and a gentleman, to have a discussion with me in relation to these things. And I'm so happy that part of this program as well they've put together a position paper in relation to some of the activities of young people in Sierra which we will be talking about of course so a gentleman and lady welcome to the program thank you Jennifer. I am Fatima Kante from Sierra North Lower Salem district yeah. uh, in civic education of I would say in politics yeah. the opposite uh, the positive side mm -hmm young people are used. Okay. The negative side, young people are used. Okay. But I am saying, or oh, to my understanding, mm. the negative side should be no-go area for the young people. Okay. Let's get up and clap for ourselves. Mm. Because these, politica, these uh, politicians, whenever they are doing our, their campaign, they use us to be behind them clapping. Mm. And at the end of the day, what we do is we don't vote. A good number of young people don't vote. Yeah, I observe that most of the time when it comes to voter apathy, because there's a, most of the time when you take a look at the amount of people that vote, it's our moms and our aunties normally. They're the ones that vote. And dads. And dads, the older ones. And those older ones, most of the time, do not understand the manifestos of these leaders because they've not been to school. So they don't, they, they don't get to read some of these manifestos and they don't understand it. So for them, most of the time, they, be, they, they vote based on sentiments, not based on the manifesto of these particular leaders. So I think what you just mentioned is very important. The fact that as young people, we have to get up and vote yeah. in, the, in the 2021 yeah, election. We, we really need to and we have to take responsibilities too. Okay. We have to take responsibilities. If you feel you can do it as a young people, as a young man, uh, as a young man or gen a lady, mm -hmm. you feel you can do it. Bully, stand up. We will support you. We will support you. Okay. In 2021 election, don't be surprised if you see me there. Oh, uh, yes. Okay. Don't be surprised. I will be happy to see that then. Yeah. So moving on, um, let's also talk about um, the need to have more um, young people participate in not just politics, but decision making processes, especially young people from this area. Why the need? Okay, thank you very much, Jenaba, for having me here. Uh, 
first of all, uh, this convergence, uh, the importance of this convergence cannot be overemphasized um, because uh, if you look at the young people that gathered here for the past five days, they come across all the 11 districts of this region with the sole objective of coming out with a position paper. And not only that, this gathering will also serve as an eye-opener or an energizer for the young people to at least have appetite for political, uh, like to take part in decision making. Because looking at uh, this region, uh, young political participation of young people is very low. But then I think with this convergence and with the topics, with the topics discussed here, uh, and the, after coming out with this position paper, I think we are expecting to see a lot of changes, especially in the coming elections. Okay. Inshallah. I know this is something that we discussed yesterday, but like I said, this is an opportunity to discuss in depth. So while you, most of you guys were discussing yesterday in relation to civic education, the participation of uh, young people, especially from this area, what were some of the things that were put across? How do you see the energy? Do you think the energy is there to, for these young people to really push when it comes to participation? Because I know you've discussed it. Because sometimes people will be like, ah, it's not, it's just a waste of time. None of them are competent. So did issues as such come up? What is their reaction towards politics in the Gambia? Very well, I think uh, I see a lot of stamina in these young people that gathered here. And as my colleague says, I think uh, in the coming elections, don't be surprised to see most of these young people because we have already taken the decision. We want to do away with the future leaders syndrome. We are leaders of today, not leaders of tomorrow. I think um, this convergence will serve as a turning point for political participation of young people in this region. Okay, and I've seen the um, CRR youth sort of an organization that you guys are trying to put together. Can you talk to me about that? Yeah, CRR Youth, uh, Youth Committee is a body. The, the Youth Committee is a body that comprises of uh, uh, all the 11 districts. Uh, uh, and we also have a chairperson who serve as the, district, uh, the, the regional youth chairperson. Mm. And all the 11 districts, their chairpersons are in this committee. So this uh, body is responsible for running the day-to-day -day affairs of the young people of this region. Okay. And that is the very body that is coordinating this activity here in Okay, Kodak. and it's the same as the CRR Youth? Exactly, that is what we call the CRR Youth Committee. Okay, because I, I thought maybe the CRR Youth is actually another kind of organization that you guys are coming up with. The one that I saw here, I felt like it's a new thing different from the CRR committee, or is it the same? Yeah, it's, it's more or less the same because it is uh, like most of the people that are in the, the, the youth committee, the regional committee, they are the same people in that committee. So this committee is, uh, is just formed here uh, after this convergence. It's, it will serve as a platform where we will uh, remind ourselves of the decisions that we need to take as young people of this region. Okay, so moving on, um, let's now talk about the participation of women in, in politics or even decision-making processes. This is a huge problem when it comes to the participation of women in politics or decision-making in general because of the long-standing biases and stereotypes. So as a young person with the energy talking to me about the fact that come 2021, you might even see a young person trying to vie for a, you know, a, a top position how do you feel as a woman, you know, being engaged into digital making processes and um, politics in general? Yeah, women, we have a very important role to play when it comes to decision making. Because okay. in those days, like they will use, they will, the elders will do, the man of the house mm. will have the final say. You will do your calculation, your everything, whatever. Mm. You come to your wife and tell her, this is what I, what I want you to do, you will do it. Mm. But coming to our generation, most of these things are change. Mm. We are trying our best to sensitize our fathers, 
to make them understand that we have we also have a say in the decision making comme ni ko olof ndiaye day wax rek dega pousse bu rire la xale mun nako for mag mun nako for and women the way we think is very very positive very very positive you don't you so bëgge xam lolu sax if you are if you want to get yourself into something you involve women you seek their opinion you hear from them my friend bobu no more no more the the outcome of that one and the one you you yourself as a gentleman lo lu nga xalat du ben jigeni xalat buñ la jox da nga wasta bobu suma yegon okay you know they underrate us but now they see our capability okay and they they are they is but is it changing now yeah, for it you is changing. it's changing yeah but i don't changing. think it's changing the reason why i don't think it's changing is because i think we only have um mary shock she's the only person vibe so far as we speak because right now i think we have like 17 political parties and more is to come before the 2021 elections yeah. and we have only one woman you In know and even that woman she was um bullied on all of that so how is that yeah see we saw her as an exemplary mm, okay yeah she said uh we are seeing her as it's not only them okay we can also do it mm. this time around she is one okay. in 2021 she could be five six seven even ten you think so yeah do we so. do we as women support each other to to and show that we have that as well we are trying our best to you think so yeah not i think so i know so because okay, we are women are supporting women yes we are advocating for that but do you see what is happening on social media women at some point do not support their fellow women when it comes to politics especially our appearances when mary shock came a lot of people felt like because of her hair you know the way she looked she's not supposed to you know vie for the position so i think there's more room for improvement when it comes to the involvement of women in politics i think so but like you said we just have to push to, and and gradually um we we will get there sure yeah so now let's talk about the issue of democracy i mean this was something that i saw the drama and i think it's it was really educative uh given uh some facts when it comes to how people are misusing it as, and all of that yesterday this is something that i talked about the peace ambassadors the gambia they have this situational report monthly situational report for the elections and it shows that the accusations and counter accusations by political parties you know can lead to violence when it comes to the elections so how do you think this can be solved this issue of the blame game and you know the insults and all of that on social media and this also comes from young people at some point so how do you think this can be changed to ensure a peaceful elections okay um thank you very much once again i think uh first of all what we need as young people is attitudinal change okay. um young people should be responsible and know how to be used uh young people i think we should graduate from um the culture of being used by politicians as political tools and i think uh, it is very important for the concept of democracy to be filtered uh, to the grassroots level okay so what is your concept of democracy um you know democracy many people think what they think democracy is and what actually democracy is is different okay. because you come across a group of people saying democracy is just say whatever you want that is democracy and that is very far from what democracy is actually okay i think um the like what you saying uh this some of these civil society organizations that embark on uh, civic education campaigns I think they said they should target the grassroots level to at least um filter down the message and at least make it clear to the grassroots level what democracy is actually because that will help a lot it will change the mindset of people um what people think democracy is and what democracy is exactly is different okay great so now i think we've um talked a, a lot about um civic education and all of that so let's move it down to the activities of young people in sierra you know in your area how do you see the activities of young people what areas do you think they need support you know i know the has the irregular migration syndrome hit your area as well if so talk to us about that 
yeah, very well. Um, irregular migration um, is definitely a concern. Uh, but alhamdulillah, the trend is reducing okay. uh, after so many efforts. And thanks to the intervention of a uh, lot of uh, organization, the likes of YEP, IMVF, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, this, uh, Even action aid, because exactly. gatherings as such can prevent young people, exactly. you know, can educate them. Exactly, yeah. action aid as well. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the things that we need. But it doesn't stop at that. Okay. Um, some of these... Uh, organizations will come and say that they want to help young people but sometimes the policies that they come with we find it very difficult as young people to benefit okay. and I will appeal uh, for the government and all these uh, donor agencies and whatsoever when they are targeting young people let them at least make it easy and let them know that we are just young people and we are beginners so let them make it very light for us so that we'll be engaged Okay. That is the only way. And also, another thing is, let us not let them not only stop at uh, creating trainings and whatsoever. Trainings are good, but they are not enough. Okay. Like looking at CRR, there is no skill center in CRR. Okay. So this is also not helping. The migration, when we talk about migration here, mm -hmm. irregular migration is there where people will be going, aiming to go to abroad for greener pastures. Mm. But also... Rural urban drift is also a concern mm -hmm. because many communities in CRR here, when you go there, especially in this time of the year, the dry season, you hardly find many young people. They are all in the Combos and Greater Banjul area mm -hmm. searching for jobs. Yeah. So because there are limited opportunities here. So if we can have skill centers and stuff like that, this will, this will minimize the rural urban drift. I think it is also very important. They should also look into that. There okay. is no skill center in the whole of CRR. Okay, CRR so Fatima, maybe big. you can add on to that in relation to the fact that, you know, there are not much um, skill centers. There's none. In there's fact, none. there's no skill center in CRR. Yeah. So as young people, how are you dealing with that? As we, we, that is very, very challenging for the young people in CRR. Okay. Because you can see many people, they went to the Combo area to them to educate uh, to engage themselves in skills okay. but at the end of the day most of them come back again because life in combos is not easy send pass with the devil combo okay so if we have our skill centers around our area mm -hmm. that will be very very helpful for our young people okay yeah so now you are t telling me that the transportation is also difficult on our side Yes. For people when they come to our area, for them to move around, it's very, it's very difficult. Okay, it's very, very difficult. Okay, then I guess then this means that um, you know uh, this is something that I talked about um, previously, whereby I think we need buses over there, whereby it's in a subsidized rate, people can move around, people in tertiary institutions and all that. I think it's quite important. Um, it's good that you. Um, this is something that you are pinpointing. So in this area, looking at the activities of young people, what kind of skill center would you recommend? What kind? Tailoring? Because you are in your communities and you know what most young people engage in. If you were to recommend a specific skill center at a first go, what kind of skill center would you recommend? You can say for the ladies, you can a cosmetic place for them like a salon okay where they can be trained over there you have a lot of them there yes and you feel like it's something they can venture it's, into in, it's something they can do okay but the support is not there okay and the how to call it again missionaries okay carpenters okay welding mm -hmm. they can all do all that okay you can find some of these young boys being apprentice mm -hmm. in the in a welder wel welding place mm -hmm which most of them find so difficult to get what they want from them, mm -hmm. they end up being relaxed okay. because it's always not easy being Taliban. Mm -hmm. It's not. Okay. But if we have a skill center where all these things have been there, you can train yourself there, it can do more good. Yeah, I totally agree. So what would you recommend as well? What kind of um, skill center or activity would you recommend and sometimes having a skill center is one thing but after that probably the job opportunities there as well is something else 
Yeah, um, thank you very much uh, once again. Uh, like, uh, if I am to recommend, uh, I will recommend a multi-purpose skill center. Okay. Uh, and we also, because in CRR, most of the young people are they, uh, into agriculture. Okay. But it's seasonal farming. Okay. So when the rainy season is over, you have nothing to do. Even if you want to in, uh, engage in gardening, you don't have the necessary support and the like example because garden number one when thinking of a garden that is the source of water okay. and water is a problem in many parts of this region mm -hmm. so i think multi-purpose skill center will be very good where people will venture into different uh life skills okay yeah okay great so um i think Stephen, i have something that i want to add okay to that. okay when it comes to agriculture if you go to our end there are so many gardens but whenever you you go to the market you find that cabbage is rampant mm. don't even ask garden it in your okay yeah there are so many gardens but a Con place a are place you saying for processing storage yes where okay. they can keep their 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 products mm -hmm. for a longer period of time mm -hmm. storage facility they don't have any mm -hmm. if onion if you, if the time of onion meet you in Sierra you may lose you. Which is which is not done. Mm -hmm. To my end, to my end, it's not done because Bunko don't rose yego inko. So all those things is something that will motivate them. Mm -hmm. As young people. As young people, okay. yes. So I think a, agriculture is an area. Yeah, a bag of a bag of cabbage right now mm -hmm. is just five hundred. Okay. Just five hundred, which right. is not good because if they have a storage facility, facility they can use that place to keep their crops longer okay. they will have better money in that i think we will take a short commercial break uh, a short break so from that break then when we come back we will just have a um, short conversation and then we will get to wrap it up because i think it's so hot out here so we might want to wrap it up now so let's go for a break <laughs> Welcome back viewers from that short break. We are still in CRR. I'm having a conversation here with a brilliant young man and a lady. So like I said, we're just gonna have a little conversation and get to wrap it up while we also have sessions with participants where they will be talking about, you know, the benefits of this particular convergence. So Fatima, I guess um, you will have to give us your final words and then we'll have to um, leave here. So now after this particular um, convergence, what do you plan to do in your area? Well, I will first of all say, Jenaba, thank you for being here. Like they say, that is first time for everything in life. But I think this is the first time seeing you in Sierra mm -hmm. in a convergence like this. Mm -hmm. For after here, what, what I am urging ev each and every one of us to do is attitudinal change. Mm -hmm. The change have to start from mm -hmm. us. Let's see what we gather from here in these five days. Let's see it. Let's not keep it to ourselves. And let's boldly get up and pick our responsibilities mm. as a young person. Mm. Be ready to do what you think you can do. Okay. Yes. Great. Final words? Okay, all right. Thank you very much. Uh, my final words uh, will be um, from here, uh, the advocacy continues. Because as you can see, the young people of CRR, we are ready. This is why we come up with this position paper. And I'm telling you this. We want to do away with this future leaders syndrome. Mm -hmm. We are no more future leaders. We are leaders from today. Okay. And from here, we are ready to filter the information and the messages that are learned here down to the grassroots level. So this advocacy continues in CRR. Okay. We are ready. Okay, thank you. thank you so much to both of you. So, like I always say, thank you so much to Action Aid and thank you to EU for funding this particular project through Action Aid the Gambia. It is very, very important that um, rural Gambian youth are also um, being catered for. You know, this is something that I've been singing and didn't have the opportunity to actually show it. But now, at least, this is a chance to show what. Um, rural youth, especially youth in CRR, can do. Thanks for watching. We'll be right back.
viewers, that is all we have for you in this edition of the Youth Dialogue. I mean, amazing segments. They did really well, you know, considering the fact that the education level is not the same and all of that. But they're able to express themselves quite well to explain to me some of the plans that they have, the meaning of democracy, sexual violence, climate change, and the list goes on. I'm so happy that we are able to have this partnership with Action Aid to be able to show all of you what is happening around this area because they totally, totally deserve it. Don't forget to connect with QTV on our different social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Go and like us on our YouTube channel and follow it. Obviously, subscribe, <laughs> rather, and go and follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to stay connected with what QTV has to offer. My personal social media handles are as well in front of you. Go and follow me. Um, give me your comments and your recommendations. I'll surely pen them down, if not even implement them. This outfit is provided by Adam's Creation. Her number is right in front. Take it, contact her. She'll provide you an outfit as nice as this or even better. I really, really love it. And all of you guys know that we're in the Ramadan. So it is very important, I mean, to look decent for the respect of the month. So go get all these decent outfits from Adam's Creation. Till I come your way next week with other young people doing extremely well across the country, do stay tuned. Thank you.